What I'm about to tell you is a story that is one of the most incredible moments in a life of mine that has been punctuated by incredible moments. And it's going to take a bit to tell this story and I've got to back up to when I was 12 year old to set the stage for this. But first I want to get on Google Earth and show you where all this happened. It's a little place called Cedar Creek in the Cascade Mountains of North Central Washington. Okay, you're looking at North Central Washington, the Cascade Mountains in North Central Washington. This is the Canadian border right here, British Columbia and Washington. Now, at the time, I lived in a little town by the name of Twisp. And this road right here is the North Cascades Highway. And from Diablo all the way to Mazama, this road was just being built in the early 1970s when I first went up there. So if you look at the Methow Valley here, the Twisp River runs up to Mazama and the Mazama Bible Camp is right here which is going to play a factor in this story. So if you go up here and you turn on this road which is now Highway 20, um, this was just a gravel road at that time and this is Cedar Creek. Now Cedar Creek is where this took place and there's a just a footpath along this and you can walk back in there for many miles. So let's continue with this story. So I grew up in a family that there wasn't really much fishing. My dad wasn't a big fisherman. Um, I had an uncle who on his way to move to Alaska saw that I was really fascinated by fishing and he gave me a fly rod when I was 12 years old. Um, so my dad had a friend that loved to fish and he was the director of Mazama Bible Camp and he had two sons that were about the same age as me and my brother Dan and um, my dad was talking to him about fishing and he said well let's let's go up into Cedar Creek we'll catch some cutthroat trout up there and uh, so we planned it and we drove up early and left right about daylight and uh, parked at the entrance to where you can hike up Cedar Creek there's just a little gravel parking lot there and we hiked all the way back in there and we hiked in six miles and it was just we went past waterfalls and rapids and there's just a footpath all the way back in there for six miles and when we got way back in there it opened up into this beautiful meadow and the creek just broke off and braided different directions and there was willows and and some beaver ponds and it was just a great place to fish and um, he had put a half of a 55 gallon drum that he just hid in a bush up there and he would build a fire under it and pour some oil on it and fry fish right on them on that drum and uh, so he said you know go fishing and we'll just meet back here about two o'clock and maybe fry some fish before we walk out and at that time you could keep six cutthroat trout per person and they had to be a minimum of six inches long and I had fished a lot of high mountain lakes and alpine lakes at that time and I was just so ate up with it that my dad was finding friends who could take me fishing and um, we had a couple guys that were the leaders of our boys brigade program in the uh, uh, church that my dad was a pastor of and they liked to fish so I would tag along with them or, or you know I would convince them to take uh, us on a boys brigade outing and to go fishing into cutthroat lake or copper glance or some of the other lakes around there um, so I had a lot of fun with that and uh, enjoyed that a lot. Well, anyway, so we just all split up up in this creek. And uh, uh, the first beaver dam I came to, I just started fishing with a royal coachman and I started catching cutthroat trout. And within less than an hour, I had my six trout that were over six inches in my creel. And I'm like, well, shoot, I got a few hours left here. I don't want to stop fishing. And probably everybody else isn't catching as many fish as I am. So... I'll just keep a few for them too. And so I kept fishing up the, every time I'd find a little pool behind a big boulder or something, I'd catch a trout out of it. Pretty soon it's two o'clock 
and my creel is absolutely bulging with trout and I'm thinking you know <clears throat> six people 36 trout um, surely um, I'm gonna really help some people fill out their limits so I walked back into where we were supposed to meet and they had the barrel out there and they were frying fish on it and I walked in there and they took one look at my creel and they're like how many do you have and I go I think I maybe got 15 18 something like that and they're like oh my gosh turns out they'd all caught a lot of fish too and we were 32 trout over our limit so we ate fish until we could hardly walk to get down to the 32 36 trout that we could carry out legally <clears throat> so that was a fantastic time I mean I it was just incredible had no idea it was gonna happen like that had no idea how serious game laws can be I mean I was 12 years old so later that summer I'm at the junior high camp at Mazama Bible Camp and I'm in a cabin with a bunch of other 12 year old boys and we're all laying in the bunk at after dark supposed to be going to sleep and we're telling stories and I told them the story about how we went up Cedar Creek and we caught all those fish and we were so far over our limit and I'm just bragging it up about all this and the boys are laughing and everything like that and thinking how great that was my counselor never said a word well the next morning I was walking towards the uh, mess hall and also my dad come up and my dad was a speaker at this camp this week my dad grabbed me by the arm and turned me around and he says do you have any idea who your camp counselor is and I'm like I don't know he's just like a guy in his 30s or something and my dad said he's the game warden he just had a talk with me this morning and you better quit telling that story that is part one of this grizzly bear story okay that's why I wanted to set the stage so you understood why Cedar Creek was so important to me. So shortly after that we moved to Iowa and uh, my dad is pastor of First Baptist Church in Forest City, Iowa and um, I, I, I liked to fish, I fell in love with the uh, Boundary Waters at that time but when I graduated from high school I just couldn't wait to get back to the mountains and one of the places I wanted to go to was Cedar Creek. So I'm 18 years old, I just like less than a week after I graduated from high school I just loaded everything I owned into my Cutlass 69 Oldsmobile Cutlass car and I drove back to Washington and I spent that summer living out of a tent or sleeping in my car um, I stayed with some friends for a short period of time and uh, I would just come down out of the mountains and maybe bale some hay or change some sprinklers or whatever it took to get a little cash so I could put some gas in my car go back up in the mountains. So I fished a lot of different lakes and hiked into a lot of different places and so Cedar Creek was one of the places that I wanted to go to and when I went into Cedar Creek the second time is where this grizzly bear encounter happened. So I rigged up my fly rod, I had an eight or nine foot fly rod and uh, I ran the lines through the guides and, and hooked a fly by the reel because as I was hiking up there'd be little places where you could walk down to the stream and if I saw a place where I'd cast I'd um, see if I could catch a trout. Just was going to spend all day up in there. So I had gone past Cedar Falls which I think is two or three miles the biggest falls and then there's a bunch of rapids and I was probably maybe four to five miles in there of the six miles that I wanted to go to get to that uh, meadow with the beaver pounds and stuff like that and I just happened to notice move I was just walking along the trail I happened to notice movement off to my right and I looked and there's a fallen log there and there is a bear that put his feet up on front of the log and lifted his nose up and he's sniffing around like this and it was a young bear. I knew at the time that it wasn't a full-grown bear. Looking back today, I realized it was a yearling cub. Well, I just froze because I'm like, holy smokes, that's a grizzly. I could tell by the kind of dished-in face and the hump on his back. I'm like, that's a grizzly bear. Um, so I just stopped and froze. And I was trying to think about what to do. And it was real bushy there. And the trail was pretty narrow. And um, I thought, you know, there's this bush on the right side here maybe I'll just try to step behind that 
and see what happens and um, I'm, you know thinking through my mind in, in just a matter of seconds should, like should I back out should I try to get by should I just freeze I don't know what to do so I just kind of took one step to try to cover myself with this bush and then right then on the other side of that bush stood up the mother bear and she stood at full height up above me and she was close enough I literally think I could have poked her with my fly rod she looked me right in the eye now there's people that have all kinds of advice on what to do when you're in a very close encounter with a grizzly bear and they all say you know don't make sudden movements don't run just back away slowly try to make yourself look big and all that well let me tell you something I dare you to even think of that stuff when a mother grizzly bear stands up right smack in front of you that stuff never crossed my mind I just totally panicked I mean I turned around and I ran and I ran so hard and so fast that I had no idea I have no idea to this day what the bear did is maybe still standing there laughing at me I don't know but I ran hard and fast and in a total panic and my fly rod with a line through it hit on the ground a couple times and on trees and it just shattered so I'm trailing this line with pieces of rod that have the eyes through the line and they're kind of bounced along behind me and I'm kind of going like this as I'm running and pretty soon the line broke and so when I finally stopped and I don't know how far I ran but I started to kind of look back and there was nothing there so I probably ran maybe 300 yards down that footpath jumping and running and just in a total state of panic and I look down and I got a fly rod that's about three feet long with a reel on the end of it is all I got left and a bunch of line hanging off of it and to this day I don't know what that bear did but I just went home and I never went back to Cedar Creek and I'd love to go there someday but I'm telling you I've had many, many discussions with people who will say there was no grizzly bears in the North Cascade Mountains in the 1970s. But I can tell you that the visions in my mind, the pictures that I can see of the bear about 30 feet to the right with his nose up on a log and the grizzly standing right in front of me, I, I know a grizzly when I see one and those were grizzly bears. And I'm embarrassed that I lost my dignity on that run but I don't think there was any other way that I could have reacted at that time so anyway that's my story of my grizzly bear encounter and uh, that is a sense of fear and panic that I've never experienced at any other time in my life I hope you enjoyed the story